65% of you watching this video right now are consuming a food that is absolutely killing your testosterone levels. Aspartame. Now this is something you want to avoid at all costs. It's basically chemical castration. So what is aspartame? It is an artificial sweetener, predominantly used in diet sodas. Why is it so bad? Aspartame affects the Leydig cells, which then induces a considerable decrease in testosterone levels. Research has also shown that aspartame can reduce sperm count and can cause DNA damage to sperm. Avoid that crap. Here's part one in my aspartame series, the history of aspartame. And what does this have to do with Donald Rumsfeld? <laughs> I know a lot of like Gen Z and whatever might not be familiar with who Donald Rumsfeld is, but he was our previous Secretary of Defense under the Bush administration. Had like this big faux pas. <laughs> I'll play the clip. Things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. I feel like I have said stuff like that before. I'm not trying to clown on him too much for that. But ultimately, Donald Rumsfeld got us into the Iraq war by lying about them having weapons of mass destruction. And it turns out they didn't have it. He lies a lot, right? What does Donald Rumsfeld actually have to do with aspartame? Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second. <laughs> right. Aspartame, it's the artificial sweetener, like NutraSweet, whatever. And it's found in countless diet sodas and sugary products, a lot of pharmaceuticals. And it has had a lot of controversy. In 1974, the then FDA commissioner, Alexander Schmidt, at first he granted approval for aspartame's use in dry foods. The controversy really began when John Olney, who was a pioneering neuroscientist and, and psychiatry professor, filed a petition to the FDA for a public hearing on aspartame citing safety concerns. The FDA commissioner agreed to investigate the alleged improprieties and after looking into it, he really criticized G.D. Searle's aspartame studies, deeming them sloppy and suffering from a pattern of conduct which comprises the scientific integrity of the studies. And the leading FDA scientist at the time, Adrian Gross, identified such big issues in the aspartame studies, including unautopsied rats, improper mixing of aspartame in feed, and evidence of brain tumors. They instead convened a panel. They ultimately voted to revoke FDA approval for aspartame due to concerns about brain tumors. <laughs> right? So during all of this, Donald Rumsfeld actually became the CEO of GD Cereal, the company that owned the patent for aspartame. Previously, he'd actually been a congressman, really young, actually at age 30, and he'd also worked for the Nixon administration. And so by 1980, Ronald Reagan had actually just been elected. Now, Donald Rumsfeld actually helped with Ronald Reagan's transition team, right? And guess what? He helped get a new FDA commissioner in place. GD Cereal reapplied for approval of aspartame. And the new FDA commissioner, the one that he helped get appointed, this guy's name was Arthur Hull Haynes. He appointed a five-person scientific committee to review the 1980 findings. And lo and behold, it was the 3-2 outcome, which continued with the ban on aspartame. Now, Arthur Hull Haynes, obviously, he was put into, put into place to help Donald Rumsfeld get aspartame approved. So Arthur Hull Haynes broke the deadlock by voting and saying that aspartame should now be approved. And shocking, not shocking, Arthur Hall Haynes actually ended up working for Cyril Aspartame Company after being FDA commissioner. Journalists at that time criti criticized all of this really heavily. But by 1995, Cyril was actually sold to Monsanto and Donald Rumsfeld got a huge payout. And again, I just have to mention this because I know someone is going to bring it up. Prominent researcher on this topic, who is also a researcher of scientific integrity at the University of Sussex, he actually found that 90% of all that studies that support aspartame safety were funded by industry. Aspartame is the target of a World Health Organization study. Could be, quote, a possible, possible carcinogen to humans. I have a friend. 25 years ago, she was like in her 20s. She went to a doctor, she had polyps, and the doctor said she was at heightened risk for colon cancer and to never drink anything with aspartame in it, no diet soda. Let's talk some more about these tasty, cancer-causing products. Aspartame, artificial sweetener, brand name NutraSweet, has been causing illnesses. I mean been around since the late 70s. Now, let's see what foods slash drinks they hide aspartame in. Not just diet, but most soft drinks. Low calorie G2. Sugar free popsicles. Pretty much, it's in there. Choose another yogurt. Careful with the chocolate. 
Heinz Ketchup Reduce Sugar Light Calories Cranberry Juice Nestle Cocoa, Some Snapples, and a Varieties of Gum With Aspartame You cannot go to the grocery store now and buy any type of even regular sugar gum that hasn't had aspartame added to it. In the 1970s, Searle tried to get it approved, and they couldn't. It took them three separate times. Because in their own studies with monkeys, large portions of them that were fed it died and contracted cancer. Now we have mainstream news articles, and the EU has done a major study finding lower birth weights, early birth and, yes, miscarriages from women that drink aspartame-laden soft drinks like Coke Zero. What is aspartame? It is the fecal matter of the E. coli bacteria. They took it and genetically engineered it. They can feed it toxic waste, and then it defecates aspartame. And it has so many bad health effects, it's just unspeakable. This is being done by design. It's also very, very addictive. But let's just go ahead and move away from aspartame. Health organization now classifies the low-calorie sweetener aspartame as a possible carcinogen. Now, it's used in several sodas, as you well know, but it's also found in ice cream, chewing gum, and cereal. Despite the new classification, however, the agency did not change its recommendation on daily intake, which remains at 40 milligrams of aspartame per kilogram of body weight. The WHO released a statement saying, quote, while safety is not a major concern at the doses in which it's commonly used, potential effects have been described that need to be investigated by more and better studies. Anahad O'Connor joins us now. He is a health columnist who writes about food and nutrition for The Washington Post. So... First off, just what's new about this? Because we've known about the dangers, potentially, of large dosages of aspartame for years. Is there something that prompted this in particular? Yeah, so there's been decades of rumors and speculation and concern about aspartame, and in particular, its risk to cancer. But there have been a couple new uh, studies of late, some observational studies and some animal studies that have raised new concerns. And so the World Health Organization decided to take another fresh look at aspartame. And there's actually two committees at the World Health Organization that ruled in with sort of conflicting opinions. Um, IARC is one agency that said that um, aspartame has the potential to cause cancer, specifically liver cancer. And then another expert committee on additives said that it actually doesn't seem to <laughs> cause any potential harm and it seems to be right. safe. So conflicting opinion there. That's well, part then, of the, that's part of the trouble with and all of exa this. Exactly. So what do we do with this information? Because uh, as we mentioned, the WHO didn't change its recommendation for our daily intake. So break down for us where, where are all the places you can find this and how much we should have. So aspartame has been around for decades, and it has really exploded in our food supply, in part because there's so much concern about added sugars or, you know, real sugars in foods. So companies have been taking sugar out of food and replacing it with artificial sweeteners like aspartame. And so you can find it in the mainstays like Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi and Diet Root Beer, but also even toothpaste and puddings wow. and popsicles. And it's in essentially 95% of all um, sweetened beverages, you know, all these diet drinks. And so anything labeled low sugar or low calorie or sugar free may actually contain aspartame or another artificial sweetener. So you bring up other artificial sweeteners. It seems like in recent years, there's been a, a movement towards Splenda, uh, which is sucralose. Uh, there's also some other artificial sweeteners as well as some natural sweeteners like agave that we, we see increasingly uh, in things. Do we know anything about whether one is better than another? Uh, how, how do they all compare? Yeah, so I think there's a few things to take away here. So number one, 
the World Health Organization earlier this year actually said that, you know, the reason most people turn to artificial sweeteners is because they're low or zero calorie and they do it in part to help control their weight. But the World Health Organization said that there's really no good evidence that these things actually help you control your weight. Mm. And there's potential for, you know, harms. Um, even, you know, the cancer link, there's a lot of debate about that and it's not entirely clear, but there's other potential harms. Like there's an increased risk of diabetes. Um, it can uh, affect your appetite and hormones. There's evidence that it can, you know, potentially affect your gut microbiome in a negative way. And so the World Health, Health Organization says that, you know, generally people should not use artificial sweeteners and you should try to eat real foods, um, whole foods and less uh, ultra processed foods. And, and that's a really important point here is that regardless of exactly, you know, whether it's causing cancer or increasing the risk of these various harms, if a food has aspartame or other artificial sweeteners, that's a pretty good indication that it's ultra processed. And most nutrition and health experts say that we should be eating fewer ultra processed foods because there are all sorts of links between ultra processed foods and obesity and weight gain and diabetes and all these health harms. So there's probably a lot of reasons why you should cut back on aspartame and other artificial sweeteners. I've been waiting for this. Remember two years ago, I told you stop having Diet Coke. This one is more helpful than this one. The World Health Organization announced that aspartame that's in this is potential cause for cancer. So why don't you listen to it? Yes, where else you can find aspartame? Come with me, I'll show you. It's the gum that you chew on, on my picture. You want to know where else you can find it? Come with me. What fuck? More, you want me to find you more? And now, the point is, stop having nonsense. A good stuff. Dinobar, Dinobar will not have aspartame. They give you Dino fuel. 